Hey everybody, Keith Dotson here, and in this video, I thought I'd quickly show you the results of a big print order that I just completed for a client. They ordered 32 black and white photographs. These are the smaller ones that I printed in-house. Anything 16 inches by 24 inches or larger, I sent out to a print lab, and those prints have not come back yet, so you'll just be seeing the smaller ones that I printed myself today. Anyways, I just wanted to quickly flip through some of these and tell you about them. Some of them have a little bit of a story. As you can see, some of these are already bagged in PhotoSafe clear bags, and I always give extra white margin to make it easier for the client to frame the photos. I sign them in the white margin. Some people want to display the signature, and they can use a window mat that's large enough to show that if they want to, but if they prefer, they can just mat over the signature for a cleaner look. We'll start with a couple of smaller prints that haven't been bagged yet, so you can see the print surface a little bit better. And there you can see the top of one of the bags. I haven't actually sealed these up yet. And this is an eight inch by eight inch uh, print of a Gulf fritillary butterfly on a purple thistle. I almost never sell prints this small, so it's kind of interesting to print such a wide variety of sizes for a client. I shot this big oak tree on a very foggy morning in the Texas Hill Country near Burnett, Texas. This was shot on Olympus Four Thirds camera back at the beginnings of my photography career and I'm still selling prints of it 15 years later. I've made large prints of this, but it's really best at 12 by 16 inches, which is this size you see it here, or smaller. I shot this old leaning shed in rural Kentucky and it's been surprisingly popular. Now I printed all of these prints using the relative colorimetric rendering intent setting on my printer. Now I understand the theory of why you'd use relative color metric over perceptual or vice versa. But what I didn't expect is that the perceptual rendering intent would print my black and white images much warmer and relative would print them more neutral to cool. I know it's hard to tell in this crappy room light, but I printed this uh, version in the perceptual setting and it's noticeably warmer. I think you can see the difference between the two prints here. Anyways, for consistency sake, I printed the entire batch in the relative color metric uh, rendering intent setting. I love this photograph of this tree with a tiny wooden birdhouse because the light was so perfect that day. But also I shot this using a vintage 85 millimeter lens and it's so dreamy. Ignore the various color cast, by the way. It's just room light and myself reflecting in the clear bags. This waking sunflower is one of my favorite photographs that I've ever taken. They ordered two of them for display in different rooms.
This mountain scene with the grazing horse was shot in the Smoky Mountains again on four thirds. And this print is uh, 12 by 16 inches as well. And I have to say, I love this scene. It makes me happy to look at this quiet place. This image of geese flying south has been on Gray's Anatomy for several years in Meredith Gray's bedroom hanging over her bed. This is an 11 inch by 14 inch print. This picture of an old barn was shot in Wisconsin probably 10 or 15 years ago. It's a 12 inch by 16 inch print and it's also four thirds. And this is a new one, just shot last winter. I discovered this abandoned house with a broken tree while I was on my way to a state park to shoot some snow scenes, and I had to stop. I pulled over in a church parking lot and started shooting away, and this was my favorite angle. And we saw a smaller print of this wheel leaned up against this tree uh, earlier. They ordered this in two different sizes, which is cool. I shot this in Adams, Tennessee. Now we'll look at a few that I have just printed this morning and they haven't fully dried yet. I usually let them dry and air out for at least 24 hours before I put them into clear bags. I shot these twisted vines because I have a fascination with vines and brambles and things that naturally twist and wrap around themselves. I'm not sure why, but I can't resist shooting these kind of things. I made an entire video about this old stone wall. I found it on public lands, but no one really knows who built it or why. A local historian thinks it might have been built for defensive purposes by soldiers during the American Civil War, but it's uncertain. You can go back and check out that video later if you want to know more about this old wall. Anyways, I'm intrigued by that single strand of barbed wire. And I shot this dramatic thunderhead in Central Texas, also back early in my career. I was still learning so much in those days. But I think this really works because of the dramatic clouds and also that sweet shaft of sunlight across the pasture. I shot this landscape with these two barren trees in the wintertime in Kentucky, and I was just 
in love with this scene because of the interplay between the branches of the two trees and, of course, that split rail fence. And I found this ivy-covered fence post on George Washington's property at Mount Vernon in Virginia. And somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's Virginia Creeper on the fence post. Anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to visit my website, keithdotson.com.